Hey guys, this is Luminous, and today we're going to be doing a very important topic. Imagine yourself in this situation. You are on one team, the other team is completely even, the game is completely even. What determines what win the game? Well, there's some things like, you know, who has a better late game carry, who has a better positioning, and one of the more important aspects, if you look at the title of this video, is who has the better item choices. A lot of times, the team that has better item choices just flat out win the game. And you guys might be asking right now, well, why do we actually have to sit here and watch this video? Don't we already have guides that tell you, okay, these are the three or four items that you should get on this hero, and these are the three or four items you should get on that hero. Like, the guides already tell us the item choices. Why do we have to sit here and watch this however long video that you're doing, Illuminous? Well, yeah, I agree. Guys give you a good general knowledge of what to get items on, on those heroes. And 85% of the time, 80% of the time, that will work. But what about that remaining 15 to 20 percent of the time? There's going to be some odd hero combination on the other side. There's going to be some strange item combination on the other side where actually the standard items you will get on, a, on this hero might not be the items you want to get. And as you play more and more games, as you watch more and more replays, more and more commentaries, um, you you're, you just become better in terms of oh maybe getting this item in this hero, which usually is the standard, but in this case probably isn't the best choice. You just get better in terms of identifying items. So what we're going to do here for today is I'm going to just look at four replays, or three or four replays, and we're going to like jump into the game 15 minutes in the game, and then we're going to look at a situation then. Because that's generally when around the time you kind of decide, okay, what is the first big item I'm going to get, right? So that's when I'm going to look and, okay, we have our five guys here, they have your five guys there. What items are we going to be getting? What items do we expect them to be getting? And we're going to have an item discussion, you know, 15 to 17 minutes in the game. And then we're going to skip ahead. I'm not going to watch anything. I'm just going to skip ahead to some, you know, late game situation. And then we're going to look back. Okay, well, 15 minutes in, I, I thought I was going to get a man style. I thought I was going to get this and that. Did I get that here? Um, why didn't I? If I got it here, would it be better? Or if I already have Manta Sao, how's the game going right now? So we're going to kind of look at the early game and plan planning stage of, okay, here's what we're going to get. And then we're going to look at the late game stage where games generally gets a little bit odd, especially when there's, you know, very strange show combination here and there. So before we jump into replay, I kind of want to talk about item cho choices in general because you, get, you hear this term being thrown out a lot. And the term is, that's a bad item. That's a bad item choice. Bad. I kind of want you guys to sit there and think for a bit. Is there really a bad item in Dota? Now don't think about an item, a certain, like X item on Y hero. Don't think about it like that. Just answer the question, is there a bad item in Dota? There's some items that's clearly better. But I don't think there's an item that's just flat out bad. Like, each and every item in the game has its own use. You know, some items get purchased a lot more, like Magic Stick. Some items don't get purchased at all, Refresher Orb. But each and every item in the game has its own use. And there's some situation where a, a quote-unquote bad item might be really good. Um, so, I, the point I'm trying to say is there's really no bad item in Dota. There's just better items, if that makes sense, right? Consider this follow situation. You are playing a game of Dota, and you see your teammate who's playing a lion, and he has a Sange. And you're thinking to yourself, that's, that's a pretty bad item. Why, that, why the heck do you get Sange online? And that's, that's the primal instinct, right? Okay, that's a bad item, right? But consider what I just said. There's no such thing as bad items. So why, why do we have this primal instinct of, that's bad? Sage give you really good HP, which line, hey, he could work with more HP. It gives you main. Not bad, right? So so can can we answer why that's a bad item? And then if we kind of struggle and try to answer the question, well, you could be like, well, he doesn't really need the HP. For example, he actually needs mana more. Like his, his spells cost a hell lot of mana. Um, you're not going to be doing a lot of physical hits, so your main's not going to be that useful. That could be it. Um, you need to position yourself a lot better. So, like, you know, you that's why Blink Dagger Force that might be better, because uh, you want to blink in and do your stuff. Um, again, you don't need the HP, because after you nuke, you're pretty much done anyways. So we, we're kind of going through line as a hero and talking about, okay, well, I see that why Sange is good in terms of giving you a lot of HP, 
But that's not what we need. We need initiation. We need mana. We need to, the ability to blink in. That's what we need, and Sage doesn't give us that. So after we think about all of this, we can see that, well, Sage might not be a bad item, but there's a lot of better items that we need to get. And I want you guys to remember that. I, I hope I'm making this point. There's no such thing as bad item. There's just better items for a lot of heroes. So with that in mind, let's jump into some heroes. Let's jump into some replays. Right, let's jump into the first game, 17 minutes in, the score is 15-11 in favor of Radiant side. Check out the farm real fast, 84-41, 64-72. Yep, Radiant is winning by quite a bit. So let's look at what this Dyer need to do in terms of item progression, in terms of getting back in this game. Okay, we're up against a Void, a Kunkka, a Viper, Queen of Pain, and Ursa. So we still have a lot of slows, but not exactly many stuns to work with. So items such as face, we wouldn't be too bad to consider as a boot choice. Um, in terms of uh, items against this kind of heavy DPS lineup, heavy physical DPS lineup, Ghost Scepter wouldn't be a bad choice. So this is kind of the global items that everyone can consider. Four staff against the melee heroes, against a slower, decent choice as well. So let's look at the individual one by one here. Crystal Min, she's, you can see she's not doing too good. Zero and three here. Seven assists, uh, playing as a primary supporter. Fine. What she really needs to do is save up for Bracer. You can see that she's uh, somewhat low level. Uh, yeah, save up for Bracer, stay alive uh, as much as possible, and try to stay back in, in, in the back of things. So Bracer, Magic Wand, you can see a Bracer, Magic Wand, Facebook on her. Okay, decent. Same thing with Dazzle, help out with the wards if you need to. Uh, boot not a necessity, Arcane Boots might be a little bit better, because his spell is a little bit more expensive to use, he has to spam quite a bit. But again, Drums, if you can make up to it, Ghost Scepter, if you just get an Ultra Kill and fire or something like that. Uh, if you luckily find yourself with some bit of gold. But for the support against this heavy nuking lineup, just Bracer. Bracer up sometimes, you, if you could really afford the extra gold, Maybe go for a buckler and work your ways up to a mecha, but uh, don't don't count on it. Don't count on it. All right, let's look at the uh, the third row here. As we see, Sand King. He again, he's up against a lot of physical DPS. Not that he's too worried about it. All he really needs up to is, to is save up for Blink Dagger and a go count. That seems like to be what he's exactly he's doing. Save up Blink Dagger. Phase Boot should be this item choice again for the extra mobility. Arcane Boot wouldn't be bad. Uh, extra HP wouldn't be too helpful to be compl complete honest. Because if you get caught you die either case. Um, having extra mobility in terms of Blink Dagger for initiation and also defensive, not not too bad. After that, you go something like a Vanguard if you really want to. You go Point Booster into Axe Stick for some late game choice. BKB is not a necessity or even need it in this game. Probably not so good against Void and whatnot. Sniper, who he needs a lot of help uh, this game. Uh, 0 and 8, uh, he's not playing well. Uh, he's just having a tough game. Now, these heroes would like to get to your face really, really quickly. Normally, I would advise to get uh, Shadow Blade in this case. Although I'm personally not a big fan of Shadow Blade, Shadow Blade will help you easily get away from these massive amount of slows, massive amount of initiations. But they have a Void. So you can Shadow Blade and then you can Chrono and there goes your, your you know escape path so I can only assume that you could try to farm your way up to a Manta style just stay back that's that's a lot of snipers play is not really what item he gets um, the shirt items will help but mostly it's up to your positioning Manta style will help you out in terms of getting into a decent position if you really worry about the HP SMY wouldn't be bad but Shadow Blade and Yasha is kind of what I want to work towards you now for Morphling, he has a lot of options, of course, after your power treads. If you want to be a little bit more offensive, you go to Yasha and do some little bit of damage. If you want to play a little bit more defensive, you could go into either a Ghost Scepter. You can see that he has 10, 0, and 2, so he's playing offensive. Mentsau, you could go Ghost Scepter and, you know, make yourself actually very invulnerable against a good deal of this damage coming through. You could upgrade that Ghost later on into a Shotgun Ethereal Blade. Or for the other route, if you want to do pure DPS output, you can start out and, and aim towards a butterfly. But it's got a butterfly against physical DPS, not too bad. So here are the item choices that we are kind of predicting that they're getting, or they should be getting. And let's look at what they are getting instead. Alright, so we have Face Boot on the Crystal Maiden. Dazzle has Arcane Boots, great. Uh, Bracer, Wards, Wand, Magic TV Scroll, pretty decent. Lincoln Sphere is going to be the item choice here. I'll talk about it in a bit. Uh, Sniper has nothing. I think he's, yeah, he's left, or he's feeding, or he's throwing. Whatever he's doing, he's not doing a really good job of. And uh, Blink Dagger and Arcane Boots. Arcane Boots is not an absolute necessity. Having extra mana 
extra mana wouldn't be bad. Uh, I personally prefer face boot, but this is kind of a personal preference. There's no right or wrong. But here is where I have the problem with the Lincoln Sphere. Um, he's he's only really badly. Uh, excuse me, he's only really well, only in people on the other side really badly. What is Lincoln Sphere is gonna block here? It's gonna block a Shadow Strike. It might block a Viper Ultimate. I think a Poison Attack actually breaks your Lincoln, and it blocks a Kunga X. That's it. I feel like Lincoln Sphere, especially in this game, is just a really poor choice because it doesn't block too much spells. It doesn't make you physically a lot survival. Uh, it doesn't make you survive a lot better. So here's a case where I won't say Lincoln Sphere is a bad item. It it just it's a suboptimal item. Yasha will be a little bit more helpful in terms of giving you armor, giving you extra mobility against the slow. Manta style could debuff a Viper ult, could debuff a, de a lot of these slows. Um, Ghost Scepter, again, like I mentioned before. So this is an item choice I really don't like a lot. Um, and you can see that they're down by 8 kills. We're going to tune back in this game in just a bit to kind of see how this game's going. So for now, we're going to leave this game real fast. All right, we're back to this game. And looks like the Dire Side is losing like crazy. This is the game where we had a Morphling got a Lincoln Sphere. And I wasn't too sure about that. And it looks like into his Lincoln Sphere, he's added a Manta style and a Eagle Horn. So going for a late game butterfly. Um, Axe Scepter is finished on the Sand King Heaven's Helper. I like that choice. Getting disarmed against his physical DPS. The fact that he says Train Fury will benefit from that. Evasion is not, not bad defensively. So I really love this build. I'm not too sure whether Axe Scepter is absolutely necessary because you already get a lot of HP from Heaven's Helper already. I do believe Axe Scepter in this case should be a lot better if you get Shivas, we get a little bit more slow for your team. Or more importantly, you get something like a. Um, like a hex, work towards a hex, cause hex against these guys. Who, by the way, mm, there's one BKB, two BKB. That's it. These guys are still very hexable, and or actually three BKB. Okay, so maybe not, maybe not hex. Sorry, I didn't wasn't really watching this. So maybe Shivas would be a little bit more helpful um, uh, for the, or maybe even four staff again for the escape ability. He's mostly playing as uh, utility, so I don't think the extra extra damage that you're doing with Agamemnon is actually going to be anything more important because again they block most of it anyways with the black king bar so i think more utilities more important sniper of course nothing he's feeding so booster on the crystal maiden the build up is nice and I, I think that's why she she actually worked up to it but if you compare the build up of soul booster to a build up of four staff i do believe four staff is decent if you have that much go ghost scepter would be nice so i really really dislike the choice here it makes her very very tanky but who the hair cares about a crystal maiden you're going to focus on the morphling you're going to focus on the sand king and then you're going to go to cm it doesn't matter if the cm survives long enough to do that much damage maybe she's going for the fact that oh i die anyways every fight uh, you know when i die i could actually heal my team when I die. You know what's better than that? Well, you could be alive and heal them with Mecha uh, or heal them with Urn. And I do believe, I know that Ur Dazzle's doing this, but if you're having that much farm and if your Dazzle's having trouble, then you build a Mecha. No big deal. So I, I think this is definitely a, uh, a subpar choice. Four staff should be better. Mecha would be better. Your standard, your drums would be better. Drums would be really good in terms of escaping from these heroes, having extra mobility. So I don't know why she does not have a drum. In this very late game analysis, because guess what? They all chase, right? Orb slow, poison slow, earth shock slow. Why is there no drum here? Of course, Mecha was attempted here on the Dazzle, not finished, probably did not have the best game. Uh, I guess it's a decent item choice. Um, she didn't, he didn't finish it. Nothing to say about that. Now, Lincoln Sphere first, he went into a Manta style, and then he went into an Eagle Horn. And I just believe this is kind of a, a wrong. This is complete. Like in normally in, in a normal game, Morphling, this is a very standard build. It's the build that you know most carries go about. In this game, it's kind of not the build that you want to do. Uh, remember, he started with ten and zero. What's his score right now? It's eighteen and three. So I mean, he he's he's carrying hard. I just believe that with a different item set, he could be carrying harder. Um, simply because you get a lot more killing opportunity if you start with the Mantis out first, you get the extra attack speed. And more importantly, the armor will be really nice. But if you go shotgun afterwards, shotgun against uh, these guys, more importantly, they can't attack. But you have pretty decent nukers on your team. Like, in fact, your entire team's nukers, aside from Sniper. Your entire teams are nukers. And if you shotgun them with Ethereal Blade, I mean, they... It sets up your team to actually do a lot more damage, so I, I, I don't believe Lincoln Sphere opening is the correct. Manta style is first, should be the first item, and then you go into Ghost Scepter, and then the Eagle Horn at the late game stage combined into a Butterfly will give you evasion. So I, I think that's a very, very decent build. 
if, if that was the case. I still don't know what Lincoln Sphere is blocking. Probably nothing. So I do believe that this is a very poor build. And I think that's pretty much it. Um, now obviously in terms of item choices, there are a lot of times it comes down to things like positioning. That's a lot more important than item choices. But for the sake of discussion in this case here, especially against some of these items on, on the other side, you can see a physical DPS. Look, double Daedalus, a lot of physical DPS and, you know, uh, BKBs and whatnot. I do believe prioritizing on survivability, such as Mecha, uh, is a little bit more important, such as Four Staff, will be really, really good against this lineup. Um, and and I, that's why I love this Heaven's Halberg, and that's why I, I dislike the lack of a Dero Blade, the lack of um, Talisman of Evasion. You could evade a lot of these DPS. And uh, don't tell me that, oh man, Talisman Evasion can't block Monkey Ping Bar. That's true. But like Gold Scepter could do that as well, right? Something. So that's that's kind of it. Now, obviously, Gold Scepter not going to be that useful, or Ethereal Blade not going to be that useful against three Black King bars. But we're watching this end game scenario right now. If you went Manta right into Ethereal Blade, you would get it before they all get their Black King bar because they don't rush their Black King bar right off the bat. They get it a while later after a couple of core items, right? So, uh, your Ethereal Blade would be really helpful, e and even though, like, they have Black King Bars now, it's it's probably by, by the time that you're, they're using it right now, it's 5 second Black King Bar. Uh, so you could still, once the BKB is done, you could still pop the Ethereal Blade on them, and it will still be useful. So, for the most part, decent item choice, not too sure about this, really not sure about this, and there's a really late game Ethereal Blade, but uh, that's, that's, that's too late, that's too late. Okay, so that's this game. Alright, we're 15 minutes into this one, Radiant is losing by 8 kills, Tower Gold, not too big of a difference, so even though they're by, down by 8 kills, okay, there's 2 tower difference, so I still assume the Dire side is winning by quite a bit, 7,000 gold, that's a huge lead, so we're going to focus on the Radiant side, because they are kind of losing, so we have Windrunner, Ursa, Silencer, Sand King, and the Storm, against a Shaker, Ancient Apparition, Shadow Fiend, Venge, and a Spirit Breaker, ooh, they have a lot of nukes, a lot of initiation power, so, Generally against this lineup, a general survival plan is not bad. So Windrunner, if you're looking at it, should be going for Mecha for general survival or Silencer should be doing that. Uh, one of these guys should be working for a pipe. There isn't a good pipe holder. I guess Windrunner is the best pipe holder there is, but they're just getting hammered down. In terms of the carries, it should be going for more BKB. Yes, BKB kind of make you impervious to most of these heroes. Physical DPS from Spirit Breaker and Shadow Bean will still hurt you. The Ventral Aura will buff everything up. Venge is not the highest level, so it's okay. So BKB, HP is their item choice, and mostly defensive item is what they need to get. Four Staff is decent, um, but against the fact that they have so much range hero and range spells, not the best item you would actually want to consider. So let's talk about each player, each hero individually. Windrunner, like I mentioned, Mecha if you can, because it makes your team survive so much better. And uh, Hood, or Pipe if the Silencer is getting Mecha. Silencer should be either getting Mecha or just survival spells. Ghost Scepter, it's okay if we go to the late game against Shadow Fiend and Spirit Breaker, but these nukes will hurt you down. So Silencer is in a very difficult choice in terms of what item he could actually get. Sand King, very, very standard item. We're going to go with bl Blink. Uh, Blink in, well, treads into Blink uh, and, and go from there. Black King Bar will be exceptional against this magical DPS. Although by the time that he actually get a Black King Bar, these guys will actually start hurting physically. So um, after, it, depending how quickly you get your Blink and depending how quickly you get your treads, you might want to say, okay, I will just go for more HP, like a point booster. Uh, so... Ursa, two, uh, two interesting choice. Of course, you're going to go Phase and Vlad first. But after that, you could either go Blink for a little bit, uh, or yeah, you could go Vanguard, you could go Blink, or you could go Shadow Blade. Um, that's the standard item choice. Like, I think against this lineup here, Blink might be a little bit more effective. You could actually Blink in there and pick off some of these very easy squishy heroes very easily. Um, Vanguard, it makes you more tanky, but between all these stuns, I mean, you could tank, but eventually they're going to outstun you. So I think Blink Dagger might be the best choice here. Shadow Blade gets easily counter, and it just costs a lot. So I think Blink Dagger will be the most effective item here on Ursa. And there's not really much thing they could do about it, um, aside from stun you down, but um, it depends on whether... here. Here's where you trust your Silencer. Okay, Silencer, I'm going to Blink it now. Are you going to press Global? If he does, Ursa is actually going to just own everything. So... Um, I don't think blacking bar is necessary, although it would be nice, but 
simply because you have a silencer, right? Storm Strike should definitely go in for Black King Bar, even though you have a silencer, simply because you need the HP. Uh, I mean, you could go for a Hex Rush, although it's going to be really, really late. One stun, you're done uh, if you don't have the Black King Bar. Lincoln's Fear is okay, although you could easily break the Lincoln with Shaker and also Ancient Operation. And uh, once you break the Lincoln, he's pretty much done as well. So I do believe it should be Black King Bar on the Storm Strike, you know, without without too much of a debate. So, that's kind of what I think they should be getting. Let's look at what they have. Alright, looks like Winrate has Phase Boot, and he's going for Staff of Wizardry, maybe for 4 Staff. Like I mentioned before, because these guys have so many ranged spells, 4 Staff wouldn't be the best item choice. Um, Fissure, they don't care about 4 Staff. A Blast, they don't care about 4 Staff. In terms of chaping, chasing or helping you chase, 4 Staff is helpful in that regard. For example, you could push the Ursa, you could push yourself, or a Shackle Shot, you could push your teammate. Like, it's a really decent chasing item. But I think the, the issue is they have trouble winning the fight in the first place here. Um, so that's that's an interesting uh, conundrum. Uh, we have flats and no shoes at all. I don't know what he's doing. He's maybe that's why he's you know having a couple of deaths here. Um, silencer with headdress need to be going for the mecha as soon as possible, and then go for and then talk with this woman. Do I ne need to get pipe or do you need to get pipe? So fairly standard item here. Sand King just is poor. I don't like. Well, I, even though I, I said power treads in the beginning, I don't like the fact that he's skimping out a lot of stuff. He just got the blink dagger now, which is great. I do believe you need a magic wand desperately, especially if you're not going arcane boots. Sand King, if you've been playing that hero a lot, you know that he runs out of mana very much so. The fact that he does not have a bottle, the fact that he does not have magic wand for pinch moment mana regeneration, I do believe that's a huge issue. Uh, and I probably, depending on how good he's switching his treads before casting a spell, he's going to run short of mana. So I do believe like this is a good build like looks good on paper but you need a little bit of mana uh regeneration or mana points in general storm straight he is going to go for lincoln sphere and lincoln sphere will block i mean there's a lot of single target spells but i think black king bar will just make your life a lot easier um lincoln sphere it's decent in terms of giving you a little extra stats regen is really nice and a lot of public players love the extra regen but more importantly, I think the extra strength is kind of what you need. Uh, the buildup is definitely a lot better if you're going to go Lincoln's Fair. But the final product of the Black King Bar, being able to jump into Shaker and you don't care. Being able to jump into Ancient Apparition, don't care. Being able to jump into Vengeance, don't really care. Um, having that ability to kind of pick off the weak support on the backside as a Storm Sphere is very important. And Lincoln's Fair really does not allow you to do that as effectively as a Black King Bar would. So I again this is not a bad item on on storm i just think it's a subpar item an inferior item if you will compared to a black king bar so do you want to point out about sand king need mana storm need to get black king bar and i do believe this team needs a quick mecha and neither of these kind of mecha holders are having a good time buying that one 19 minutes into this game here, it looks like 19 to 22, fairly even game on most part. Towers, looks like we're down a couple bit here on the Radiant side. Uh, fairly even, uh, the Dire in a small lead. Let's look at the gold difference. 3,000 gold, nothing too big. Let's look at the hero as on the Radiant side, we're on sort of on the losing team. 18 creep kills, nothing to write home. No creep kills at all on any one of these guys, especially 18 minutes in. DKs have some, but nothing like compared to these guys. So in a late game advantage, you're going to have difficulty in terms, in a late game situation, they're going to have difficulty in terms of getting items. So, let's look at what we got here. Silencer, Zeus, uh, Ricky, Pudge, and DK against the Crystal Maiden, uh, Bloodseeker, Skeleton King, Spearbreaker, and Lich. So a very good good mix of physical and and uh, physical damage and slows and magical damage. So it's going to be somewhat difficult in terms of getting items against this lineup. Um, I say you ha you prioritize a little bit more on physical survivability because you know that Crystal Maidens are gonna not gonna nuke that hard. Lich is, eh, it's okay, but you know it's a Lich, it's a support. You could actually out tank it. So for the most part, I say you go for Vanguards mostly, especially on uh, the physical DPS uh, or on the melee tankers. You should go for a Vanguard. For your support heroes, um, Silencer should be maybe aiming for a Ghost Scepter for survivability. You could. Uh, you could, uh, what you can call it, you could uh, glaive out of ghost, glaive walk, 
or walk out of Ghost Scepter, that would be pretty nice. Mecha should be his first and foremost choice because there's no Mecha holder on his team. Zeus, again, uh, four staff will be decent because you have a couple of, you have three melee right clickers. So any any type of utility support, whether it's going to be Mecha, whether it's going to be a Ghost Scepter, whether it's going to be a four staff, will be exceptionally helpful. So that's the items that these two should be aiming at. In terms of Ricky, I think your standard item set should be sufficient, which is your treads into your Purge Blade. Now, against Crystal Maiden, she can bite you, and that's going to put you, uh, that's going to reveal your invisibility. But for Ricky, you kind of play as a silent assassin anyways. You don't kind of walk in and start a team fight. So you really, he's, he's going to have a tough time against these guys, because he doesn't kill these guys really quickly, but in fact, they will kill you very, very quickly. They have many good stuns. So maybe instead of Purge Blade, you could offer uh, SMY if you're a little bit worried about survivability. Um, you can offer even BKB, but that's... That's kind of going the wrong route, if you know what I'm saying. So, Purge Blade is kind of uh, the, the item you want to go for, and then you go from there. Now, for this Pudge, Vanguard, as suggested, again, um, the physical DPS of these guys, the right click is just a lot. Um, Hood is okay, because they do have some spell damage, especially if you upgraded a pipe, it will be really helpful to your teammate. But I can't say that it's a lot better than a Vanguard. And one of the things I really like to do as Pudge against very heavy... HP hero is I go and accept her afterwards because if you ever get a successful bite off you actually like you you are a DPS dealer so with Pudge so I, I think it's a decent choice on Pudge uh, something like phase boot four staff if you want to help you know make yourself a little bit more utility based but more importantly Vanguard and accept her later on that's kind of what I would go for Dragonite you just tank uh, pipe is not necessary in this case here so Vanguard might not be a necessity as well you could go for something like uh, HP heavy uh, SMY and then you could go into assault carry ass uh, you might eat Heaven's Halberg actually against this lineup will be perfect three physical DPS um, you get evasion that would be nice for survivability but the more more importantly the, the, the disable against these guys kind of force them to either get a BKB or just not attack for two seconds in team fight really good HP for the DK really good um, survivability against DK and it's actually a pretty decent cheap uh, item so Heaven Halberg I think it's probably one of the best choice here for the Dragon Knight here so that's what I think they should be getting and it looks like the game has evened up a little bit as I was talking about it let's see exactly what they're getting instead all right, we have an Oblivion Staff on the Silencer. My first question is, my first reaction is this is a bad item, but there's no such thing as a bad item. Why would Oblivion Staff is kind of a weak item choice on Silencer? Well, he doesn't need a mana regen he, um, that it gives you. Um, the attack speed and damage is nice if you want to go to a Silencer DPS route, but what it doesn't give you is more survivability. What it gives you is, if you want to upgrade this to a... Uh, Orchid, I assume, I assume that he's going for Orchid. It's kind of redundant because you already, you're already you a silencer. You don't need an extra silence from your item. You have Last Word and Global for that. So I do believe this is a very poor investment of gold. With this and a couple hundred more gold, you get a four staff. And that would be really helpful against this slow base melee right-clicking team. So I, I do believe this is a very poor choice. Uh, Zeus said you could see that he's going for Acceptor. I do believe this is a poor choice as well. You spent 4,000 gold to make your, your ultimate do like minuscule of extra damage especially against these tanky tanky uh carries uh spare breaker and skeleton king gets really really tanky you get an extra big nuke but after that okay then your 4k investments down the drain sure you get more mana you get more hp that's always more helpful but that's only really helpful to you if your your entire team is dead your your zeus your buffed up zeus ultimate is not going to do too much so i do believe this is a little bit more uh solo centric kind of play and i don't like that and i do believe four staff ghost scepter mecha will be a lot more helpful against this team so quote unquote bad item choice but more importantly suboptimal item choice uh ricky's going for mask of madness and a ring of health uh, my first initial reaction is like, why? Why is this happening? Like, it actually makes you do pretty decent DPS. I do believe Purge Blade plus the fact that you backstab within um uh, your your backstab is based on your agility, right? So giving getting Purge Blade at plus twenty agility there, and the fact that you're backstabbing, it actually do, do more damage. I assume, especially if you purge and they're actually not running away. That actually will do more damage than Mask of Madness, and obviously you're not taking damage as you're. Uh, you know, from the the Berserk Mask of Madness. Um, of, uh, of course, like, you get more mobility, you get more attacks, you get lifesteal, that's decent as well. I don't believe, I don't believe this is better than the actual 
standard build for Ricky, especially against this lineup. The, the Purge will be really helpful to these fast-moving heroes if they're chasing or if they're running away. These uh, squishy supports are absolutely food for you if you get a Purge. You blink in Purge, Cloud, and they're, they're dead. So I do believe this is a really weak item choice here. And this is a hood on, on Pudge. I already talked about why Pipe, if you get it, it will be decent. I actually prefer Vanguard, but it wouldn't matter completely too much here. So Pudge, I mean, mostly it's, it's really on the hooks. I do like the fact that he has an urn. Uh, not that's going to be too useful against these guys, but against the two supports, you could easily pick them off. They don't really have too much HP to work with. Uh, Hood is okay. Pipe is decent if you finish it up. You kind of kind of wipe out all the magical damage. But the magical damage on the dire side, that's not what you're really afraid of. You're afraid of the late game right click DPS. So um, eh, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, but I mean, I don't have too many complaints about this one. Uh, you know, I have more complaints about the Ricky. All right, Dragonite here is he's gunning for Armlet, uh, Hyperstone, Lifesteal. Very old school kind of tr traditional DPS build. It's not bad uh, in terms of dealing DPS. One of the better builds to do it. Um, so this is more like we'll, we'll try to out DPS you, which is definitely not a bad way to go about it. The build I previously suggested, uh, which is the, uh, you know, SNY or a Heaven's Halberg into AC, that's definitely a lot more defensive of the build. If you want to go offensive about it, if you want to uh, go that way, that's definitely the, that's a decent choice as well. Um, so definitely two interesting routes. I'm not too sure exactly how this is going to match up against this, especially if you're taking stuns here and there. Um, there's a lot of armor they could benefit from frost, frost armor, so that's going to be somewhat difficult to out DPS them. Uh, if you get an AC, that will be your DPS plus survival item. Lifesteal DPS plus survival. So it, it's it's cool. Uh, it, it's, it's a decent item choice. It's a decent item choice. We'll see how this game go in a bit. So I will be jumping back to the uh, game number two, where the Storm Spirit um, had a perseverance. You guys remember that? And I was saying, oh, I don't like that choice. Um, but unfortunately, that game already ended. I'm using the watch live function I'm so, as I'm jumping from game to game to game and, and going there. So um, that game ended as I was doing the other games. So uh, unfortunately, we're not going to have the game game analysis for that one. But let's look back to this game, which is where we have a very questionable Oblivion staff on our silencer have not upgraded to anything and now we're going into vanguard vanguard i do like the choice survivability and the fact that you're staying alive to do a lot of stuff will be decent uh looks like the pudge is going for acceptor i like that as well ricky haven't got anything so i feel like he hasn't been doing anything it looks like zeus haven't been doing anything uh i mean it's it's of course we are only 10 15 minutes uh away from the last situation that we yeah, about 10-15 minutes. So not much time for them to get any items. Uh, Crystal Maiden has disconnected, so these guys are getting more gold and BKB on the uh, Skeleton King. Uh, armlet, okay. So fairly standard item here. We have a Heaven's Halberd. That's nice. Lich has Necro Book and Arcane or Emeka, and we have a Reaver on this SK. So we're we're looking like on the Radiant side. We're looking like we're in big trouble here. Acceptor is finished. I, I just want to, for a moment, just kind of picture yourself. What is Acceptor going to do? Uh, you're doing 460 damage to a guy who has a Reaver, to a guy that can regen a lot of HP, and to a guy that has Heaven's Halberd, Drums, and Lifesteal. Really, and of course this guy has Reincarnation. Really, what is what is the increase of damage? Like from 360, 400 to 460? Uh, my, my question is... Is that, is that helpful to the team to do that little extra damage? And I, I could really safely answer you, it's not going to be helpful, at least not in this case here. Force Staff will be, you know, infinitely more helpful against these three melee. Yule Scepter will be infinitely more useful. Ghost Scepter will be infinitely more useful. Mecha will be a lot better. In any case, all those items will be a lot better than this. I do like the fact that you see that Pudge is going for the point booster. I still, especially like the the later and later the game that we go, and and I still see the hood, and I'm like, ah, I just I just don't like this. Um, and and right now, <laughs> SK is just, well, let's watch this game a little bit to see how it's going. Right, 
Reincarnation comes in, they just kind of mow down the racks. Not enough DPX. You can see Vortex or Dragonite player here. He he's just manning up. He's just doing as much damage as possible. And having a survive having this kind of build allows him to do that. I like it because he's both doing a lot of DPS but he's surviving because he's regening a lot as well. Unfortunately they're not doing enough damage to prevent the skeleton king from taking their racks. They're down two racks already. And the enemy team still have uh, dual towers up. Roshan is back up, but in either case, I do believe the game is mostly lost. Um, he is going to finish Assault fairly soon. Let me check out the go here on our Dragonite friend. He will have Assault in just like 300-400 gold. But yeah, the Assault is going to make him a, a very deep, heavy DPS dealing force, but he's not going to do enough DPS. And now we have a force staff on Silencer. Why did we not have this 20 minutes ago? That's my question number one. And uh, yeah. So overall, I, I guess we can stick around and watch a bit of this game um, as I'm going for the late game analysis of these items. But yeah, I, I mean the DK item choice is decent. Um, I feel like he's he's really not even doing enough damage though, especially against these tanky force. Um, just going back to Heaven's Halberg on DK for a bit. Heaven's Halberg is going to force, let's say, D, uh, SK to pop his BKB or force Spirit Breaker to do something because he, can't, he literally can't attack. In this case here, and of course, what what would you do if he pops a Heaven's Halberd on you? Um, well, you're not gonna attack for a couple of seconds. I guess that's obvious. On uh, the cloud, by the way, would be really nice uh, against these lineup, but for the most part, I don't think they care too much about it. Especially if this guy has a Moon Keeping Bar. So, um, really, I'm not I'm not hating on DK's item build. In fact, I think it's a decent item build. Um, and, and really, he's just in a tough situation. Not many items, so not many other item builds could actually do anything. Uh, assault is finished, and uh, we'll watch for one more team fight as we see these guys Roshan it up. In terms of the item choice here on on the dire, I really dig the the fact that we have Necro Book Necro Three that's gonna reveal Ricky. Like not many people say, like, oh man, you know, let's just get a gem. Well, why not get a Necro Three? It gives you a lot of survival as well. I have no idea what this Monkey King bar is really about. Is he really afraid of the smoke? I do believe. Blacking bar should be the item choice here on most of this physical DPS. Oh, well, blacking bar is actually not that necessary, given the fact that they don't have many stuns to deal with. So I guess it makes sense. SMY increase your damage by a lot as well, uh, given the fact that you're um, empowering haste based on your movement speed. So the faster you move, the more damage you do. So SMY gives you the movement speed, also give you the stage, a lot of survival power. Um, getting AC on on this guy wouldn't be bad, because you know. He, he spends a lot of his time on the front lines. Um, on the Blood Seeker, he's got a Mantis out. It's an okay item choice. You would always, always, always want to get uh, Radiance instead. Because imagine the Radiance, right? He's just running through the team fight, silence the, 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 the Zeus or something like that, and you just go charge through. In fact, you don't even have to tank. In fact, you have Skeleton King and uh, your Spirit Breaker tank. So. Basically, they could tank for you, and you could do the Radiance to kind of do the damage over time. Of course, you drop the Rupture, you drop the Silence, and you just go to town. Um, SMY gives you a little bit more armor, survivability, but you don't really need that, especially not against Zeus. So, I, I it's, it's, it's okay. It's just not the best. Looks like we're finally going to have a fight here. They just charge in against a DK. And uh, still no Heaven Halberd being used, but yeah, they, they don't care about this. D this DK is just going to get owned. He, you saw how that team fight went. He actually could not have attacked. So a lot of his uh, DPS from like the armlet just kind of went to waste. And that's how I believe the 30% or the 20%, 25. Whatever evasion you get from Heaven's Halberd, the disarm you could throw on your teammates or your enemies is going to be very, very helpful. The soul definitely helped out in there, but just not enough. I really believe it should have been treads, SMY if necessary. And then uh, Heaven's Halberg as a must against this lineup at least, and then Assault. Uh, Pudge wasn't able to do too much, he just died. Uh, Ricky has has his has his uh, Master Madness, but he's not actually not doing anything. He hasn't got any items for the past 20 minutes. And you can see that, yeah, they are actually running away, because guess what? He can't chase with his Mask of Madness. Uh, you really should be chasing with Purge Stick. It's just a, just a lot better. Uh, you can say his DPS output is actually not that high. Uh, with backstab, with diffuser blade, it would be a lot higher. So, yep, the game is pretty much over. Um, so, before I kind of just close this segment out, there's a lot of times where you watch a game and the team is down by 20 kills, and it doesn't, it won't really matter what item you get. To be completely honest here, because when you're down by 20 kills, like you can have a rapier on one of your carry and 
the care would just get focused and he would still die and you still lose. Like, it, there's very, very few occasions where a perfect item choice when you're down by 20 kills will win you the game. But in a game where it's, you know, pretty close like this, sure, the enemy team has a superior late game advantage. Uh, but I think if we get smarter items overall on a you know, couple of these heroes, in fact, if all of these heroes got smarter items, I would think that the Radiant team could actually have a chance to win the game. So, really, item choices have a, a big impact in the game. Let me know, because I, I felt like I was flying through all of these games, because, you know, it was, it was a lot, watch live function, so I literally had to fly through each game. Let me know if it's everything was too fast, uh, whether you'd like to see more of this in the future. Yeah, I'm, you, as you can see, the Learning with Lumi series is kind of changing from time to time. And it, it just depends on what I feel like doing. So I feel like doing item choices in this one. Let me know if you, it was helpful. If it was helpful, uh, do tell your friends about it. Support my channel by subscribing and stuff like that. That would be really nice. And that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. And until next time, Luminous signing off. See you guys.